doing very well this morning. I've already tried to take out our uh, thing. Yeah, but we uh, don't want you falling over. No, it seems to be working. As far as I'm concerned, it was just a trial. <laughs> and we've just done a test to see how it would uh, work under extreme circumstances. <laughs> and flying through the air counts as extreme circumstances. And praise the Lord, it's working. Um, and the thing is, we didn't even resort to, to praying, which is, uh, which is quite suddenly. That was the next stage, to be honest. But there you go. So it is working, so thank you, Lord, for that. It's great to be in God's house this morning. Um, it's great to be able to, to rejoice in all that he's done. I'm going to ask um, Rosemary if she'll share um, her experience, because she's obviously not been well, but is back with us. I'm going to try to get past there without killing us up. By the way, <laughs> but Rosemary, we're looking after her because she can only walk uh, 300 yards a day, you see. She's already walked 100. Anyway, Rosemary, over to you. Oh, yes, yes uh, I would like to say a nice thank you to all the friends that came to see me while I had my long stay in hospital. It was very nice of people. And thanks for the cards and the gifts. You know, um, it shows that I'm always remembered, and it's a caring church. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rosemary. Okay. Today is our harvest, and we're going to celebrate a little bit later on. And what we'd like you to do is when it comes that time, if you can bring any produce, um, I know we're going for tins this year, and put them on there as part of our, our gifting. Then what we're doing with this is we're going to put it into our own uh, food bank, as it were, and it'll be given out over the coming months. One of the things to bear in mind though, if we want to do what we did last year, we did 30 bags um, for cat people and other people that we knew. Now, that'll take a, a fair bit of doing this year, so I would suggest, yes, yeah, for Christmas, sorry, it's for Christmas. Didn't hear, heard that needs to be obeyed. Um, quite then. But it is the Christmas gifts that we give out. But now's the time to start putting those tins away. And if you can do that, that's absolutely brilliant. And we can then uh, be able to make up the, the bags. I have to say, when, when you see them, I don't know if you saw them last year, but the bags are full and really something to, to receive. Um, I don't think we one of us would turn around and say, well, I want one, one of them. They are really, really nice, and uh, we're, we're trying to help people and to, to meet their needs. So if you can start doing that over the next few months so that we're ready, bring it in, put it into the, uh, our food bank, and then we'll use that plus others to uh, enable us to do that. We've also got the shoe, back, shoe box appeal. Again, now's the time to start on that. And I've forgotten to write down what date we have to do it by. I can't see it in, so I'll make it up. I can say, I'm going to go for October, the end of October, so we'll say it's the 30th of October. And if it's wrong, Claire said. <laughs> okay, so the 30th of October, so bring your stuff along. Again, if you've got stuff that you can't make up into a full box, bring it along and then what we'll do is add it to others so that uh, we can bless others that we come in contact with. We're going to do the uh, prayer for the nations now, and it should be Tamsin. But Tamsin is not well at this moment. Her uh, heart rate was 40 this morning, which uh, is not good, is it? And uh, she was going to come along, then I was going to have to supply her with a microphone. So that, and my averages this morning, I wasn't really tripped. Um, but she was going to, she wanted to share with us because, I don't know if you remember, but last time, she was supposed to do it, she failed to turn up. So I, had, I rang her up and, and just said to her, and your excuses? No. She said, I only just found out, I only just found out. So we had a bit of a laugh about it, which, which was good. And yesterday she said, she said, I wouldn't dare do it twice. So uh, we, we need to pray for Tamsin. So as Heather's gonna read out the prayer for the nation, pray for Tamsin at the same time that the Lord just be with her where she is. Thanks Heather. Right, we are praying for Libya. So let's pray. 
It was exactly a fortnight ago that the city of Derna in eastern Libya was virtually destroyed <coughs> by floods from a burst dam following heavy rain from Storm Daniel. Already it is not a major news item, but for the people of Libya it is a major catastrophe, with over 4,000 confirmed fatalities, more than 8,000 still missing, and an estimated 43,000 internally displaced people. We need to pray for the country and people of Libya. Father, from ancient times you have endowed Libya with much wealth, resulting in power and the flourishing of learning from the ancient cities of Carthage in the west of Cyrene in the east. We thank you that you chose a Libyan, Simon of Cyrene, to help Jesus carry his cross, and that the Christian faith flourished in Libya under Roman rule. Today, that leg legacy lives on, even though the majority of the population of seven million is Muslim, and there is widespread persecution of Christians sometimes from their own families and communities, sometimes from Islamic extremist groups. We pray for protection for that small number of believers, that you will strengthen their faith, embolden their witness, and enable them to meet with believers from other countries to encourage and support them. Lord, this latest disaster has hit a country whose infrastructure was already virtually non-existent with two competing governments, one internationally recognised based in Tripoli in the west, an opposing group based in Benghazi in the east near to Derna. Father, we pray that the enormity of the disaster will encourage the leaders of these two opposing parties to cease the traditional enmity that has existed between east and west and work towards cooperating on how to use Libya's oil wealth to help its citizens. We pray that by the power of your spirit, you will raise up men and women of truth and integrity who will free this lawless nation of the enormous corruption and power of the armed militant Islamist groups and criminal <coughs> gangs. We pray against the stronghold of the evil of the people traffickers who exploit the dire situation of refugees fleeing from persecution in their own lands, many of them Christians. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of Arab World Media, which serves to spread the gospel through the internet, and ask that many in Libya will take advantage of their social media posts and connect with the responders who can share the good news of Jesus Christ. We ask that you will encourage the work of our dear friend Hugo Walmerand, who leads a team of field workers in North Africa and the Middle East, and who recently reported over 1,500 online contacts in the region in one month. Fill him and his team with the wisdom and grace to know best how to reach the troubled people of Libya. Give them new energy, Lord, to overcome the exhaustion of working with such negativity and in the words of their latest prayer letter to inspire, to bring fresh vision, to encourage, to strategize, to model the way of standing firmly in faith. We ask all these things in the name of the Father and the word of the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Shall we stand there? We're going to sing and we're going to bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord as we do so. Thank you.
of your people this morning. No matter how big, no matter how small. Lord, it's an honor to you. And to give back unto you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, we just ask that as we come this morning and we bring these offerings. Lord, that you would multiply them and multiply them and multiply them. And they will be used for your honor, for your glory, for your kingdom, for your name's sake. Amen. Should we just take our seats for a few moments? Try to be very careful where I'm standing at the moment. <laughs> It's harvest today. The great thing about harvest, of course, is he is the God of the harvest, isn't he? It's God that provides everything. God that pro provides the seed. He provides the, the, the weather, the rain when it's needful. Um, not obviously, not always happy with the rain, but there you go. Um, but he always brings the sunshine to be able to bring the harvest. And there's nothing better than if you're growing something and you see it develop and grow. And when you, when you pick it and then when you eat it, I don't know, but you guys who, do, who grow your own stuff, it tastes different, doesn't it? Mm. It tastes better and it, uh, it's just so really nice. And again this morning what the Lord is saying to us, what I've done for you will taste better and is good for you because he is the Lord of the harvest. And so we give him thanks this morning and we say to the Lord that you know, we really want to bless you this morning and we want to bless those people that we've brought stuff for. So what we're going to do, if I can stop Jane talking at the back, oh she heard me, um, can we have a song of some description? No, it's okay. I'm going to ask if you guys can bring your tin stuff, put it on the table at the front, then we're going to pray for it, that it'll, it'll uh, achieve what God has sent it to achieve, and then we will uh, carry on with the rest of the service. Okay, that's fine. That's great. Yeah, cap of Right, if you want to bring this stuff out, guys, we'll start singing at the song. I have no idea what it is.
Well, it looks very good, doesn't it? Amen. Well, yeah. I switched to iron. Yeah, it looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's given to the Lord because we we purchased it, but the Lord gave us that in the first place. So we want to just pray. Let's just pray. Lord, we just ask that every single tin that is there, every single box of food that is there, Lord, it will meet a need. And you will answer their prayers. And when they are in need, Lord, they will just seek you. And through seeking you, they will find you to be faithful in everything. So Lord, we want, just want to thank you this morning for giving us the ability to give. And giving us the ability to be part of this. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In name's sake. Amen. 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 Miss somebody this morning, because I think she must have sneaked in. Melody's with us this morning, so it's good to see Melody back. Um, I looked over that way for somebody and I thought, Oh yes! And it was one of those little double takes, so it's good that Melody's back with us, enjoying being, hopefully enjoying being in fellowship with us again. So, Noel? Yes. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I've just got to get the cameras focused. You know, it's as if he does a lot. Yeah. Are we focused? <coughs> the kids are going out. Just bless them. Ask the Lord to bless them. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. So, no one's going to share with us now the book of Romans, not the whole of it, <laughs> chapter 6. And then he's going to share that with us. And then we're going to, after that, we're going to have some praise and worship together. Bless you. Am I on? Excellent. Uh, can we just pray? Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, please anoint your servant and your word in Jesus' name. If you recap, uh, Romans was written by the Apostle Paul in the winter of AD 57-58. Paul was in Corinth in Greece uh, at the close of his third missionary journey on the eve of his departure to Jerusalem with the money for the poor saints in Jerusalem. Paul has written the letter to the church in Rome but he had a problem. It's not like today where you've got a, a GPO postal service where you stick a stamp on and you put it in a letterbox but there was the only postal service that was was Caesar's postal service but Paul was not allowed to use that so Paul had a problem so how did he solve it he recruited a lady named Phoebe of the church of Censoria uh, which was also uh, in Corinth and she would take the letter to Rome and with the help of the Navy she was able to sail to Rome so the one thing that we see here is that Paul is an early supporter of women's ministry hallelujah um, the background to Romans 6, which I'm going to go through the whole chapter, uh, deals with grace, sin and forgiveness. And I shall divide the chapter into two parts. Um, the first 14 verses, which is God's grace is greater than habitual sin. And the remainder, God's grace is greater than occasional sin. Um, so what Paul was trying to do in the first verse was to counteract the argument that if we are no longer under the law and Christ forgives our sins then why not continue sinning, keep on sinning and Christ keeps on forgiving and Paul says that that is absolutely unthinkable Christ died to save us from our sins and his forgiveness is for the purpose of making us hate our sins. Before we go too much further, 
uh, we need to understand the nature of sin. Uh, and there is a definition in 1 John 3, 4 that sin is lawlessness going against the law of God. You might think that all sins are the same, but they're not. And we're told in 1 Corinthians 6, 8 Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received of God? So all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Baptism was not a religious word uh, because when they used to dye a piece of cloth they used to baptise it into the dye and then bring it out again and that was called baptism. When we baptise people we immerse them in water and we put them down under the water into the death of Christ. Three days later Christ walked out of the tomb into his resurrected life. When we baptise you, we immerse you, but we don't keep you under the water for three days. <laughs> Every time we do a baptism, we bring you up again. Not just for safety's sake, but because the Bible says that we shall be raised with Christ into the newness of life. And this is a spiritual reality just as, re just as real as if you were nailed to the cross in his death, just as real as if you walked out of the tomb with Jesus in the newness of life. From Paul's writing, it is plain that he didn't regard baptism as an optional extra, but Paul regarded baptism as central to the Christian faith. I will say that again. Paul did not regard baptism as an optional extra. He regarded it as central to the Christian faith. We have been united with Christ into his death. We will certainly, certainly be in his resurrection. If we have been united with Christ, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection that we should no longer be slaves of sin for he who has died has been free from sin our slavery to sin can only be broken by death I don't know if you remember the film in 1960 some of us will uh, called Spartacus uh, Kirk Douglas uh, was the, the hero there and um, he was the slave Spartacus who had escaped um, and later on Spartacus was asked the question are you afraid to die? and Spartacus said death is the only freedom a slave knows that is why he was not afraid to die we are set free from our sin through death through Christ's death on the cross and our death with Christ in baptism. The, let me just turn over two pages. Uh, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Our old man or our old nature, uh, which we inherited from Adam, has been nailed to the cross and crucified with Christ and has died with Jesus on the cross. Our deacon Jane, who spoke so well last week, said people are weary of words. So I'm going to try another method to get my message across. I've got a hammer here. I hope you'll remember this message. <laughs> Because our old man, our old nature, that we inherited from Adam, has been nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. 
Don't worry about this podium, the elders want a new one anyway. <laughs> I'll repeat that. Our old man has been nailed to the cross. Our old man has died. Not only died, but buried in the waters of baptism. Nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. Will you remember that? Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. <laughs> now, God gives us a new man. Our old man is dead, and God gives us a new man, a new nature. It's not us turning over a new leaf, but God gives us a new nature for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah. The next few verses are fairly self-explanatory. I'll read them to you. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died once to sin, but the life he leads, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so you obey evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. Um, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus 8 verse 23, uh, we're told that the priests were anointed uh, with blood. They were put blood on the priest right here his right thumb and his right great toe. We need to dedicate our members each day to God. We need blood on our ears so we can hear what God is saying to us. We need blood on our hands so we can work for God. And we need blood on our toes so that we can walk for God. God's grace is greater than our occasional sin. This is the second half now. And a new question is asked, which looks the same as the same as the verse in verse 1, but actually in ancient Greek uh, it is slightly different. It asks the question, shall we sin occasionally because we are not under the law, but under grace. Paul replies, by no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God, Though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin. You have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now you offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. Can you imagine if you had a new job and the first day in your new job you went, you went there, but at lunchtime you decided to leave and go back to your old job and ask your old master, what do you want me to do? That is totally unthinkable and therefore we do not do that. We stay with the one who saved us. 
When you are slaves to sin, you are free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap from the time from things that you are not ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. It's not a trick question, but think of four trees in a line. The first tree has a year of growth, the second tree has five years of growth, the third tree has 15 years of growth, and the fourth tree 20 years of growth. Which tree is the hardest to get out? Any offers? It's not a trick question. Say again? The one that's been around longer. Yes, abs absolutely, absolutely. So, whatever your nature is, if it's a sin nature it's, and it's been there a long time, it's hard to get out. But on the other hand, if it's a, a nature for Christ that's been going all those years, it won't come out the ground. Hallelujah. And the last verse in the chapter, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. When, when you work for sin, you get wages, but the wages are death. And when we work for God, we get no pay. But the benefit system is phenomenal. It is eternal life. Hallelujah. Some follow the theology that once saved, always saved. Now that theology is not correct. But what it allows those people that think that is that they can carry on with sin. But 1 Timothy 4.1 the Spirit clearly says that in the last days some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teaching come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared with hot iron. So you can see it is possible for some people to walk away from their faith. I've got a, another prop, thanks to Jane. It's, it's an iron. Now I would imagine that some of, your, some of you ladies have accidentally burnt yourself on your iron. Have you done that? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And some of you probably have still got the scars to show. But what the word is saying is that some have seared themselves, their consciences, with a hot iron. That's a terrible thing to, to actually happen. <laughs> Our consciences are like a compass. Sorry about that. <laughs> We can, talk, we can talk to our consciences and, our, and the Lord will speak to us through our consciences. And our consciences are just like a compass. It'll tell you if you're doing right, it'll tell you if you're doing wrong. It will commend you or it will condemn you. And if your conscience is seared through continuing sin, it's like a ship without a compass heading for the rocks. And in 1 Timothy 1.20, Hymenius is included in the son who had put away faith and a good conscience and who had made shipwreck concerning their faith. As First Lieutenant of our ship HMS Kellington, 
we had been uh, sweeping for World War II mines in the Irish Sea and uh, I'd even had the job of cutting a mine out of a, out of a trawler's net. Um, now we were going back home to Shoreham by sea. Um, I had run on 180, we were steering due south for Devon and Cornwall and then we would change course to Land's End. And suddenly, without warning, the compass fell over, and that's naval slang for stop working. Immediately I said, stop the ship, let go both anchors, because I had no desire to hit the rocks and endanger the safety of the 40-man crew. Immediately, the captain appeared on the bridge beside me, and he said, where are we? I said, that's a good question, sir. <laughs> he said, number one, what are you going to do? I said, sir, there's a, a clump of land over there. With your permission, I could take the Gemini dinghy and a small crew and go ashore and find out where we are. He said, permission granted. So we went ashore and uh, I was looking for the postman or people to say, where are we? And then I realized it was five o'clock on a Sunday morning. There was nobody about. We've sometimes got the nickname Sunday Sailors, but this time it was getting close. Then I had a bright idea. There must be a station in the town, and that station would have the name of the town on it. Sure enough, there was a station, and it had the name of the town on it. I didn't recognize the name of the town. I'd never played them at rugby. I wasn't even sure they had a rugby team. And it was so long I had to write it down. A-B-E-R-Y-S-T-W-Y-T-A-T. -E I went back to the ship. I drew a line on the chart from Aberystwyth Station. And we plotted our course. And we used the magnetic compass, uh, which is another form, uh, uh, calculating the declination and we made a safe course for Land's End. What has stayed with me over the years is where are we? I shall conclude by asking the question, where are you in your Christian life? Is your compass working? Are you on a safe course for Land's End without sin setting you off course? God bless you all, and a safe course we wish you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit concerned about uh, him mind sweeping with an iron. <laughs> Where you put that down. But, uh, it's interesting, there's a uh, there's, uh, thing about Rasputin, the monk. Am I on here? Yeah. On there? Oh, I am on there. Rasputin, the monk, the Russian guy. Um, one of his greatest phrases was, I'm going to sin as much as I can, because then I can be forgiven so, so much. Yeah. And if you look at history, there was no forgiveness coming his way. It's so wrong, isn't it? But the good thing about it is, all your sin, no matter how big, how vast it may be, is all forgiven because of Jesus. One of the phrases that Noel used was, and it, it, it's just an ordinary phrase in a sense, it says, now you have been set free from sin. But it's the first word that got me. Now you have been set free. Not in the future, not sometimes it will happen. Now it has happened, because Jesus died, rose again, and is coming back for you and for me. And it's because he has set us free from sin now.
And that's the position that we find ourselves in this morning. So thank you Noel for bringing that word to us this morning. We're going to now worship. And that's going to be a response to what the Lord has said. The response to, uh, from our hearts this morning. We're going to really worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you Jane. It's one of those mornings this morning, isn't it? Oh, lost my plectrum. That's how I did to everything. Oh, thank you for that word. That was brilliant. It's one of those mornings this morning. Paul trips over the lead. Thank you, Lord, for keeping our um, overhead projector safe. My guitar is flashing, battery finishing, so I could die any second. My, my guitar, not, not anything else. So thank you, <laughs> Graham, for being here this morning. And I wanted to do a new song this morning. It's one that we've been thinking about for quite some time. It's a really amazing song, but we're really struggling with it, and that's absolutely honest. So we thought we'd nailed it, got here this morning to start rehearsing. It's not, it's not quite coming together. So I thought, do you know what? You're a great congregation, so shall we learn it together? Are you happy with that? And if it goes wrong, do you mind? Perfection takes a little longer. And only Mary Poppins was actually practically perfect, not perfectly perfect. It's um, written by Phil Wickham and a couple of other guys, and it's based around a sort of a creed. It's called I Believe. It's a new song, so we're going to give it a try, if that's okay with you. So if you want to stay seated while we give this a try, and then we'll, we'll stand up and sing it together if it works. If not, we'll see how we go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You want to learn the chorus first, or are you just going to go for the whole song? Go for the whole song. Okay, Janet, thank you. I'm doing this on Janet's advice. <laughs>
words, absolutely phenomenal words, and you will get there, but you'll have to just work with us a bit on it. I, didn't, I just felt the Lord said do it this morning, so we'll do the very best we can. So let's stand and sing together. <laughs>
following these in my vision so I can see things more more for you in Jesus' name. Into my mind comes pictures of watching soaring eagles. They soar on thermals. They can see everywhere. How I long, Lord, to be soaring on the thermals of your love, which sets us free to see what you can see, Lord. Lord, we're so limited here. We know you are limitless. You're an almighty God who can do anything. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible mm. with you, Lord. And if we remain in you and you remain in us, we can ask for anything mm. and it will be done. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, for that promise. Yes. And we long for those souls of love mm. to each one of us to experience seeing through your eyes. In Jesus' name, we pray this for everyone here. Amen. Amen. Sue was praying a word of promise. Just for God said promise. Have you got a promise that God hasn't fulfilled yet? Something he's promised you, not something you want, but something God's promised. Just hold on to that. Hold on to that because he can do, I can do all things through Christ, it says. And the difficult things that need to be done through promise. And we, we have already sung this song, but I just think we need to sing it again. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Don't like waiting. Anybody else here like me? That like instant action it doesn't happen. We need to wait. Sometimes as we've been waiting as a church, some of the promises God's given us as a church we've been waiting a long time a long time a long time so I'm going to sing strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord because our God is reigning forever and he holds the key and the answer and the time and he's never wrong isn't that just wonderful he's never wrong <laughs>
patience strapped in and your time to wait strapped in. I, just, I, I thought you were going to move, but I was looking at that. Okay, we're going to sing one last song, which is just one I just love. And after all we've been learning about who Jesus is, and that Jesus brings life, and that we don't need to sin anymore, we have to make those choices. We're going to sing, There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Don't forget He's holy. You don't play around with holy things. It only counts that you're with him forever and forever and forever. I hope I see you there. And I mean that. I hope I see you there. You heard what uh, Noel said this morning. It's about where we are and who we are in Christ. And if we are where we should be with him and we are where we should be in him, then we will see each other face to face. It always amazes me, you know, People, I think on that day, people will be amazed who are, who are there. Well, I never thought we'd see him. I never thought we'd see her. But God chooses. But the sadness is, there are times when you say, I wonder where he is. I wonder where she is. And we do those things in time to make certain they're right in eternity. 
And when we stand in glory, and when we see his face, see him face to face, then that will be a joy and a wonder to behold. Just one announcement. We're going to carry on with the discipleship group um, over the coming months. Jane is going to lead that for us. So what we want to do is if you're interested, and I hope you are interested in coming along, if you come to my left-hand side and meet up with Jane, and she's going to run you through uh, some of the uh, information as to how it runs and what, what we're looking to do. And for you to come along and then make a decision at some stage. You don't have to make a decision today, but make a, a decision that you're going to go and become part of the discipleship group. I think if you asked all, all those who have already been through it, they will tell you they've been blessed beyond. And if you want to be blessed beyond all understanding, then you need to be coming and becoming part of that. Let's just pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for the joy that we will see you. We will see you face to face. And we want to come to that place this morning where our relationship with you is such that in that sense we are already seeing you face to face. And Lord, we ask that you bless everything that we say and everything that we do. Lord, we just ask that you continue to pour out your spirit upon us, that you will bless us, and in turn we will be a blessing unto you. And so as we leave this place, Father, Lord, we just ask that you would just be with us. You continue to minister unto us. Lord, we know that peace and that satisfaction of walking with you. And Lord, we will come again rejoicing and being able to declare the wonders you've done, even in this coming week, in each of our lives. So be with us, Father, for your name's sake. Amen. Come and join us for some tea and coffee together, those of you who are not meeting up with Jane.